Okay, this is a Living Light Quicksilver 8.1. It's basically an 8 foot box with a single bed in the back and what I guess they would consider a queen bed up front. They also make an 8.0 version which just has like two double beds, but you would never get two people, I don't think, on both sides. Okay, so this is just going to be a quick little walk through. I got to open it up quick, get some stuff out of there, and get, get it ready to go in the garage. <clears throat> All right, so this is basically what the outside looks like. Everything on here is factory except for the propane tank and the mount. I added that later. You can get them factory installed, but this model, uh, you know, didn't come with it, so I had to put it on. By the way, these are very hard to find for whatever reason. Uh, in the state that I live in, this was the only one available, and literally the only one available, and uh, I would have had to travel pretty far to, to find another one. There's uh, the city water connection, power connection. Down there, it looks like um, a sewage, um, you know, thing, but really that's where you keep the stays for the bunk ends. Um, here's... You'll notice down at the very bottom of this tire, there's a little bump right there. I didn't notice that until I got back. We went on vacation. The trailer's got about 2,000 miles on it now. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of snaps. This tonneau cover is held on by snaps. The sides are held on by snaps. Basically, the whole box, the frame, everything in here is aluminum. The cabinetry, when we get inside, you'll see is aluminum, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about the importance of that in a little while but uh, that's that I'm gonna put this up now I'm gonna do it by myself I'm not gonna film the whole thing uh, you know it's pretty boring if you want a really good video on how to set this up the live and light folks you know have their own YouTube page and their own video it's uh, all you know really simple basically we're gonna unsnap this roll it up flip the bunk ends over they get attached down here uh, with aluminum stays that run up on a you know on an angle from the bunk ends to those little brackets right there on the bottom where it says www which are held in that black thing on the other side and then you just fold out the bimini top style this has no roof that raises up and down it's a bimini style pop-up uh, similar to what you would have in a boat maybe uh, you know if you've ever seen like a center console boat or something like that with the bimini top so and then the sides just get snapped down okay so i'm going to take that take it out put it together and uh, i'll be back at you in a minute okay here it is uh, partially open you can see the stays just run up from there to there no biggie right um the cushion sits in here when it folds over that one in the back's not in there just because of the way i folded this up the last time after i got it back in the yard all the electronics are down in this box this water uh, jug comes with it. It's for the pump sink, but the sink can also get hooked up to city water, so that's good. This is just a, an extra container that I bought. Runs on the outside for the water to drain into when you don't have a city source set up. Now this is the bimini top. I'll fold it down. The, the real critical thing you have to remember uh, when you're folding this down is to get all the fabric so it's not pinched between any of the bars. Okay, That's pretty much what it looks like. And uh, we'll be back in a second when I get this fully up. Okay, that's uh, basically what it looks like when it's up. It's The door's obviously not zippered, and I did not snap all the snaps that need to get snapped. I only did enough to get it open and hold it in place. Because, like I said, this is going to get a quick bath, get dried off, and uh, get put in the barn. So, that's the reason why I'm not doing that, okay? Uh, but, you know, you get the basic idea. We'll go inside, take a quick look around, see what's going on. Okay. Door obviously opens like that, steps right there, goes, pulls in and out for, for that. So <clears throat> that's the single bed over there. That's the dinette. Dinette goes, uh, you know, table comes up off of there. Those cushions all get put on there. Those cushions are covered with um, the same kind of material you'd use in a boat. So it's all weather. The dinette is all plastic, cabinets are all aluminum, uh, you know, inside. There's nothing in here that can rot or go bad. 
The floor itself is all tongue and groove aluminum. So there's a lot of dirt in there, right? This is the carpet's coming out here before storage. It's all gonna get vacuumed, cleaned up. Whew, a lot of dust. Okay, like I said, we just came back from vacation. And that's the one thing that makes this kind of trailer pretty cool. Pop-ups always seem like they're, they're not pop-ups, RVs in general to me doing research always seem like a lot of maintenance, a lot of stuff can rot, a lot of stuff can go bad, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I basically wanted something to use as a base camp that wouldn't just rot away sitting in my garage, you know, if I only use it uh, two, two weekends or two, two week trips a year, you know, maybe three weeks a year or whatever. You know, you got a lot of money invested, even at this bottom end, where, you know, you don't want it to turn into a rotting pile of garbage in the garage, right? So, anyway, the dinette, all that stuff, if you're at a campground that doesn't have a picnic table, can all go outside. None of that stuff is bolted in. It can all go outside. It's all weather resistant. Um, ample storage down in here. These things come right off. Okay. Obviously, uh, all this stuff gets rolled up, held with Velcro. This window uh, comes down, gets rolled up, Velcro holds it in place in the little roll. What else can I say about the inside here? Oh, th this is like one of the big complaints with these. See all this extra string? I gotta like cut it off maybe. I've heard people say they gotta melt it or whatever. It gets caught in the zippers, which is a number one problem. And it's just, you know, like there's edging stuff you can use to make that you know, so it's not a problem like that, but it's 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 on every window. It's a little bit of a bad detail. Like they almost didn't really care what they were doing. Uh, you may be wondering what this PVC stuff is for. I have my 25-year-old dorm refrigerator is miraculously still working. Front little legs going here. The back gets velcroed on. You can still open the door. So I, I put a refrigerator in there. Obviously, refrigerator only works if you're at a campground that has shore power. On top of that, my wife bought a mic little microwave that goes on top, and there's no bathroom in here, obviously, okay? But uh, put a porta potty right there. Now, <clears throat> you, you gotta, if you have, see, I have sons, you know, so it's no big deal, but, you know, <clears throat> so everybody can use it in here. Everybody's pretty modest, or, you know, you can't be too modest, I should say. And, you know, my wife does whatever she needs to do in the middle of the night while everybody's sleeping and during the day you just kick the kids out of the out of the camper so there's that you know two weeks we were away in this had plenty of clothes stored up uh, camp chairs underneath the thing normally when you're traveling the cushions just lay across the top in bed mode um, this particular model the 8.1 theoretically can have uh, six people sleeping in here now I don't maybe two adults on this queen bed and four little kids you might be able to pull that off but honestly four like two preteens and two adults pretty much you're packed in here okay um, so there's that maybe wondering also why there's two mattresses here these stock mattresses at some point it's fine for a kid uh, but I'm a I'm a little bit of a butterball so the mattress over here, it, you know, very uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, I'm a guy who's used to sleeping on the ground on a Thermarest pad, so I'm th these mattresses are horrible. So we happen to have an old mattress from a, a convertible pull-out couch um, that we threw out a couple years ago, and we just kept the mattress around in case the kids have sleepovers, whatever. You, you can, like, throw it on the floor, let them sleep on it. So now, when this is all folded up, I leave the thicker mattress from the couch this this blue one i leave that in this little pan the bed pan and this the big mattress i throw on top of the bed stays that are folded on top of the camper and i just throw the tonneau cover over there and it's it's a, pretty much a perfect fit it's almost like it was designed to do that uh because when i first brought this home from the the uh rv place well, actually we bought it from a, like a landscaping trailer place they're, they're not really an rv place where i bought it uh, the tonneau cover just flaps around. There's plenty of extra material. So, yeah, no problems with that. I've been able to get the extra mattress. I usually put the, the, the blue mattress down. It's a little, a little narrower, a little not narrower. Boy, that's hard to say. It's a little shorter than this. So, um, I put that down first and then throw the factory mattress over the top. Worked out completely fine. Very comfortable. Total good night's sleep. 
Uh, now, <clears throat> right here, obviously, this gets held tight, snapped on the thing, but there's still a little bit of room there, and what I did was, <clears throat> <clears throat> I really apologize, that, excuse me, I had a little frog in my throat. What we did uh, to stop bugs and stuff from coming up in there, which is not really a problem on the bunk ends, but on the sides, we had uh, the air conditioning, uh, like window air conditioning foam, which I sprayed, um, Sawyer makes a product, I think it's called uh, Promiathin or something. It's heavy duty, uh, you know, uh, bug spray. And if any, any bugs get on it, you know, kills them instantly pretty much. Which, by the way, if you have cats, do not spray that around the cats because apparently it doesn't affect dogs, but it will cause brain damage in cats for whatever reason. I don't know what the difference would be, but there you go. Um, and then the only place where it really let in... Uh, hang on a second. 